All right, Zachary, what are you looking at? Well, uh, at this point, you guys have heard my view. I'm against the current student debt cancellation, unless the corrupt college industry is dealt with first. I understand all the pro arguments, and don't let the perfect be the end of the mood. I get it. Don't prolong suffering. But to me, considering the fact that government action is scarce, that often you really only get one shot at these types of things, and this is likely to be the last student debt action for quite some time, I can see this as nothing more than akin to the immorality of the way that we dealt with the financial crisis of 2008. In 2008, at a basic level, we bailed out the financial institutions who caused the mess that we were in, and we let the homeowners go bankrupt. Lives were ruined for a generation of which many people never recovered. Today's student debt cancellation, yes, it will help up to $10,000, it's similar. There was a weak consumer argument for bailing out the banks. Had to do so so people could get basic services, companies could get payroll, people wouldn't lose faith in the system. But at the end of the day, we all know exactly who helped them most. And the same is said for 10K student loan debt cancellation. 10K, by current estimates, touches approximately 31% of all borrowers. That's great, certainly. But what they don't tell you is that the two thirds who remain will continue to have to pay down not only their balances and accruing interests. What the Biden policy also does not do is deal with the students and others in the pipeline who will continue to come through the system. This is where the cancellation of 10K or any cancellation without dealing with the college industry is corrupt. If you cancel $10,000 in student loan debt, the overall level of debt will return to $1.8 trillion in literally just four years. Even if you took full cancellation, it would be back in 15 years. That is immoral. It is effectively a puny gift to a small segment of the population, who also, by the way, happen to be disproportionately vote for the Democratic Party, and then still continually to screw the current students who are in the pipeline right before those who come before them. There's only one way to fix this. It has to be done, and it can't come later. You have to destroy the corrupt college industry. It has exploded over the last 40 years. Since 1980, college tuition and fees are up 1,200%, while the CPI is up 236. So literally, costs of college and fees have risen five times faster than overall inflation. In the last 20 years, it's accelerated. The average cost of private college in 2002 was $18,000 a year, $10,000 for out-of-state, $3,700 for in-state. Today, the average cost of private college is $4,300, 28,000 $28, for out-of-state, and $11,600 for in-state. That means an in-state tuition degree is currently running the average person $40,000 thousand dollars for private colleges it's a hundred and sixty that is completely and totally insane so again why why are costs increasing this much the answer is actually student debt itself and again demonstrates the corrupt arrangement between the student debt industry the government and the colleges themselves a landmark study from the new york fed in 2017 exposed just how corrupt this bargain is for every one dollar of increase in student debt colleges increase their price of tuition and fees by a whopping 60 cents consider that this is fully a wealth transfer to the colleges. Furthermore, of the remaining 40 cents on the dollar, the vast majority of it is being profited on by the debt facilitators themselves who are making money hand over fist from interest repayments. The only person not making money is you. The case for college and debt was simple. Yes, it costs more, but you make more money over the course of your life. That is still mostly true, and it was especially true in the 80s and the 90s. But we are living in an entirely new world today. Of today, nearly one quarter of four-year college degree entries do not graduate, meaning they have debt and they don't have the premium. The rest of them have seen wages and the wage premium itself stagnate right alongside of those who don't have a college degree. In effect, no wage earners are getting raises at the same rate that the colleges are. So if the whole point of college is to help you earn more, that promise is dwindling. Yet these crooks are charging astronomically high prices. So where is all this money going? I ask again. It's not to your education. In fact, it is to the massive enrichment of the colleges themselves, their administrators, and especially the largest banks on Wall Street. Colleges are nonprofit. They are not subject to taxation. They have, in the last 20 years, effectively become wealth management funds. The total market value of college endowments in 2020 was a whopping $645 billion. Harvard and Yale, respectively, have 40 and 30 billion, which are earning massive premiums on Wall Street, paying fat fees to venture capital funds that invest in, as well as other private equity and hedge funds. The people who service these funds are becoming genuinely filthy rich off the profits that they distribute. 
all of which is ill-gotten from subsidies paid by you through loans or your parents' hard-earned money. Beyond the financial institutions, who else is making a massive profit? Well, an eight-year review of 1,500 colleges and universities found that they, those who accept federal student loans, that spending at higher education institutions on, quote, student services and administration outpaced all spending on instruction, aka not education. Who are these so-called administrators? You guessed it. The massive growth has been funneled not only to the administrators traditionally at colleges, but to the so-called diversity, equity, and inclusion racket. In fact, over the last five years, the average university in the United States now has an average, yes, average 45 people gainfully employed to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. My personal favorite example is at the University of North Carolina. They have 13 times more people working on campus diversity, equity, and inclusion than students with disabilities. That multiple remains between double and six at many of the largest universities in the United States, all of which are state universities. All of these people are making bank, full state benefits off your tuition money. To recap, colleges in league with the student loan borrowers have taken millions of students for the ride of a lifetime. The current policy by the Biden administration provides measly relief to those students, while also nothing to attack the criminals who have taken their money, spent it on everything under the sun, mostly on BS diversity programs and lazy rivers, except for new instruction and research. All those people need to be brought to justice. Then, student loan cancellation. That does nothing right now, except for incentivize people to take out more loans with the hope of cancellation in the future, profiting the criminals. The more loans, the more these people make. I don't think that's how it's supposed to work. I end by noting again my position. The level of student debt right now is criminal. It is immoral. It destroys families. It destroys the promise of the American dream. And if we deal with the colleges, I say wipe every scrap of it out by taxing the endowments of these universities 100% and then making it so they can never make profit again. But the current policy doesn't do any of that. Thus, I'm against it. And I hope that you can understand how I got to this place. I just think it's very important, Crystal. And I think, frankly, a lot of people on the left just don't want to grapple with the fact these people- Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.